Hey, hey, good morning, y'all. Actually, good afternoon from where most of you probably are since a lot of my listeners are in the U.S., but I do have some in New Zealand, which is where I'm coming to you live, so good morning to those who are listening in live. If you're watching the replay, good day to you, whatever time of day it may be. My name is Cindy Lou from Be Bold You, where we take life's twists and turns and turn them into something beautiful. And today, I'm here with Kim White. She is the collaboration queen. Well, she calls herself the kindergarten princess, but I would say she's actually the collaboration queen. So we're going to just have a kickback really uh, talk today um, about collaboration. Now, it may or may not work because I am on the road, so I'm using borrowed internet. And some of you know how that can be. We're going to give it our best go, and if we have to re-record it for the podcast later, we'll do that. But for you all today, you get us as we are. And one of the things that I definitely want to say is if you're on the road and you work in business, how awesome is it that you get to just keep on doing it, even though you do not have it all you know, exactly as it would be at home. So that's one of the things I love about working from home. It doesn't have to be from home. So, Miss Kim White, thank you so much for being here this morning. And I would love for you to tell the people anything else you'd like to talk about. Oh, well, about thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me on. I, I just adore you, and I think you are such a special, amazing woman. And it's an honor to be connected to you. Thank you so much, Kim. So tell me when you started. When was your very, very, very first collaboration? Was it pretty? Um, well, I consider messy beautiful because I think everything that starts out in anything is messy. And we kind of like frown on that. And we want it to be perfect like someone who's been doing it for a very long time. And I didn't know collaboration was actually collaboration. Like I didn't know that word really because I really started over three decades ago, I learned how to collaborate. And I think that it's amazing to see the benefits of it at 51, you know, that started as a teenager, really. So Cheryl has said where, what happened? Did you lose connection? It came on and went right back off. So does that mean that we're still on or are we off? <laughs> you know, in all my experience with the live, usually if you keep going, it'll like basically catch up. So. Okay. So we'll keep going and we can do this again. Might not have the giraffe room, which Lori would love. So I was, I was like, oh, I'm in the giraffe room. Lori, Lori. <laughs> I love it. Anyway. Yeah, it's great. Well, we're staying at a place called Noah's Ark in the top northwest of um, New Zealand, and it's so cool here. Wow. But the internet is a little bit jumpy. I thought maybe people wouldn't be on because it'd be early enough in the morning, but it sounds like maybe cows are getting up. Anyway, so why do, why do you love collaboration? I think it's a sexy business principle. When you work together on something, you build a camaraderie and you build a relationship with someone who also grows as you grow. And, you know, if you followed me for any time at all, you know that my, one of my favorite quotes is that when the water rises, all the boats rise. And I can't lose if I'm helping you win. I, you know, that is part of the, the principle that is sexy to me is I don't want to do life alone or I don't want to do business alone. I want to surround myself with people who are also generous and, you know, want to succeed and want to be a blessing to other people. So I think people are confused about what even really is. Can you give us your definition? Yes, ma'am. This is one of my favorite topics, actually, because 
there are a lot of business models and collaboration is something that you do not pay you you come together as you know two people or a group of people for one common goal and it may be a goal of like for a nonprofit it may be a fundraiser or for a for-profit business you know it may be something that everyone gets promoted at the same time because of what they're doing together and this is one of the biggest telltale signs if it's a really a collaboration if someone says buy my thing and we can collaborate that is not collaboration because if you have to buy to get into a collaboration it's no longer a collaboration there are lots of other kinds of you know things that are that are great if they're done well you can do joint ventures you can do affiliate you can do partnerships you can do all kinds of things but my favorite is collaboration and it definitely is different than those other things so i've said to people let's collaborate before and they've mistook it for well, what are you going to pay me and so that would have been more of a joint venture or more of a a working relationship maybe a collaboration you don't put money in to do the thing now you might share some marketing expense or something like that but i don't pay someone to be in a collaboration that's something we all choose to do for the common goal a joint venture we both do some work we both do you know part of the work part of the marketing part of all that and we split the profit does not have to be 50 50 it can be 10 percent and 90 percent but a joint venture definitely has work on both sides an affiliate is i do all the work and you market it and that's you get a portion of what you sell on my behalf because you're doing the marketing piece so very different models all of them can be used successfully if you're in the right kind of relationship with the person and you have the right rules set up. Yeah, something that you've taught me is to have a plan when you collaborate, to know ahead why you're getting together, why are you even wanting to work together. Mm -hmm. I gave the demonstration one time of collaboration being like a bunch of people coming together to build a house. Now you have to take the financial part of that out because some of those are paid people. But if you think about the fact that, say none of them were paying to be into it and, and you know they were all just coming together to build a house, you, can't, you can build a better house if you have a plumber who's doing the plumbing and we have some electrician who's doing the electric instead of trying to have one jack of all trades doing it all. The house is going to be much better. So, and I, and that's how I see collaboration: is it's people coming together to build something bigger and better than they could build by themselves. So and that's I, exactly right. And it also takes you farther, faster. Like you can grow your business so much faster when you learn to collaborate, because you are spending your time basically promoting other people. But the benefit to that is you're actually getting promoted also. It, everyone wins in that situation when it's a right kind of collaboration. You know, there's that word is used, or really I prefer to say misused, so much that people get confused about what it means. And some companies actually teach their sales force to use that as a way into someone's you know, to get them to buy something. And to me, that's sleazy marketing. It's not being upfront that I really want you just to buy what I'm selling, but I'm going to put it inside this pretty package that's called collaboration. And that's not sexy. So how do you go about then getting people to understand? I mean, I'm sure there must be people who have been online for a long time. And when they hear the word collaboration and that you're teaching collaboration, that they probably have that slime feeling just left over from prior, you know, experiences with yes. bad collaboration, basically. 
So how do you get past that as a as somebody who's right now teaching that? Well, I think the knowledge is power. Like I think it's very um, powerful when you are educated on what you're saying because. I can tell you, I'm going to sell you a house that's a garage, but if it's a garage, it's a garage. It's not, you know, it's not the same thing. And so I think that it's also one of those things that I can stand in a garage and tell you I'm a car, but that doesn't make me a car. And so I know that's kind of probably a silly analogy, but that's the thing about collaboration is, people call all kinds of things collaboration because they want you to come and do what they want you to do. But the truth is collaboration has a very sexy principle behind it. And it's really that serving courageously, you know, not being so worried that you're going to take advantage of me. And it's also to do with betting. You know, I have been burned. We'll call it that in collaborations um, lots of times, like there's lots of times I've been burned. And so I can pull back from collaboration and say, I'm not going to do that anymore because I got burned this time and this time. Or I can look and go, okay, I didn't vet them well. That's the pattern that they live by. And I didn't vet them. I didn't I didn't take time. I always want you to slow down, slow down in a collaboration and, and really make that plan because in the planning process, what most people don't realize when I teach that you will actually learn about people in the planning process. If they're not willing to make a plan with you to actually sit down and, and work that out, you don't want to do any collaborations with them because they're already telling you they're not going to follow the rules. They're not going to follow, you know, they're not going to observe the boundaries. They're not going to do whatever it is. And that's not a good collaboration partner. Well, that's really interesting that you say that because I've had somebody that I really love and adore and I attempted to make a plan and it was like the door like slammed shut. Like it wasn't like, I don't have time for that now. Let's look at doing it, you know, later. It was just like, I don't have time for something like that right now. I was like, okay, then, yeah. So, it, then thank you. <laughs> I don't want to work with that person because I'm okay. So, you don't have time to do it now. You know, would you have time to do it in another time? Or is it something you're just not interested in, but you don't want to tell me that you're not interested in it? Like, you know, tell me why. Don't just say, I can't do it right now. Well, I can also tell you about collaboration, that it's actually something that communication is a key to success, because if someone won't give you feedback, and I'm talking honest feedback, and they won't take honest feedback, that's not a good fit either. I always tell everyone that goes through our class, you know, do something small. Don't try to do this six month collaboration plan with somebody you've never worked with because you may find out that that's the worst six months ever. You know, you want to, you want to take it small, do a small project, do a small time frame so that you can see how they act when things don't go right. Because, and my pastor used to say, you don't really know somebody till you've had a fight with them, you know, and I don't want to fight with anyone, but that's true. You know, we let our guard down and maybe let some of our ugly hang out <laughs> when, when things are stressful or things are not going the way we want them to. And you have to know if that person has a pattern of, you know, being angry. They have a pattern of being the victim. They have a pattern of, you know, acting ugly to people that you might be working for. You might be promoting them. And then it bites you because you promoted them to people that they did a bad job for. And mm. that happens. Like, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't have a perfect track record with people I have collaborated with. But that's not going to stop me from continuing because the ones that I've collaborated with that were 
truly generous people and truly collaborators, it has been phenomenal, like the results. The results are amazing. So even if you've had that experience of someone who really doesn't understand or someone who doesn't have the integrity to be in a collaboration, be nice and just don't do one with them. Yeah, I think keep looking. Keep looking for the right people. I mean, it's really like in anything in business, if you're, if you don't, targeting the right customers, then you're trying to sell, you know, something to somebody who doesn't even want it. So are you trying to work with somebody who doesn't want to do the work or doesn't want to work with you or doesn't actually like the way you work or what you do, but they're too afraid to tell you or like you say, you know, always wanting to be the victim. I had this one lady one time who her MO was to buy things and then take them back to the store. Like get home and decide, oh, no, 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 I don't want that. So I did not apply that to what I was doing in business. So she joined me as a team member and she bought the big package. And the next thing I know, she's wanting to return everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, wait, she does that in everything. The way yeah. you do anything is how you do everything. So if you watch how people are in other areas of their life, you might get it. If you're close enough to see that, it's a little harder when you're online. But if you are um, watching that, then you can, I just got a message from Kim saying that they can't see us. So we'll, we'll just keep going because we're going to be recording it and hopefully we can upload the recording. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. And if not, we'll do it again. We won't have the lovely giraffe, but hey, you know, I'll be home next week so we can do it again. Anyway, um, I don't know what I was saying now. <laughs> well, how, how, <laughs> how people do anything is how they do everything is really true and one of the ways that I recommend everyone vet someone the very first thing they do is go look at their social media posts because if you go back and and you know this is not coming from a point of pride this is a point of intention you can go all the way back to the day my account started and you won't find me what I call throwing up on Facebook. I'm not being mean to someone and I'm not ranting about different things all the time. And I'm not being ugly to people or snarky or, you know, snotty or any of those words that we like to use on purpose. Because if someone is upset with me, I want to handle that. I don't want to lose anyone out of my life unless they choose to stay in that spot because our social media, you know, we get it in our head. There's some anonymity there that we can act ugly and we don't have any responsibility or repercussions. Well, that's a great way to see if you're working with someone who's an influencer or someone who is like an, in, an instigator. That's probably the best word. Someone who's causing trouble or someone who's kind. And it doesn't mean that you can't work with someone who causes drama, but you better know going in what it's going to cost you. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's about 21 after, and since it's not recording, um, <laughs> I think we might just end for today. Okay. And I think we will do this again when I'm in my home turf or in a place where there's a little bit better internet. For those who may be watching or listening to this podcast, which I may or may not upload, so you won't hear any of this because I'm likely to edit it all out. But in case you know you're listening online now and you're laughing because you can only hear us and not see us, hey, this is the way it is. Real life is messy, so do it messy. Be brave. Be bold. Be you. So this is Cindy Lou from Be Bold You and. Kim White with the My Sexy Business Team. And we have come to you today to share with you what collaboration is all about. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope that you always remember to be bold you. Mm.